Hey there, I'm Lance and I'm a gamer. And I'm Sam and I'm a non-gamer. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to help gamers find great games to play with non-gamers. And today we're taking a look at Stacks and Stacks by Pure Fun Media. Stacks and Stacks is a card game coming to crowdfunding here in the near future, so make sure to check out the link down below in the description of this video after you watch it. And we do want to thank Pure Fun Media for sponsoring this video. So Stacks and Stacks is going to be a game in which you are going to be trying to get cards out of the stacks that are in front of you, claiming stacks amongst other players, but also the, the cards in front of you as well, and limiting the number of cards you draw from the deck because cards that you have in front of you and in your hand are going to be negative points at the end of a round. So you want to try to shred those cards as best as possible. Let me show you how this game works down below, and then we'll come back and share our thoughts on it as a gamer and non-gamer. All right, I have stacks and stacks on the table. Let me show you guys how this card game works. Now, I do want to make sure you understand two things. First, that this is a prototype. What you see here, the final artwork, components, and rules may change once it's released from crowdfunding. So make sure you understand that. And then secondly, this is not a full rules explanation. This is just a rules overview. If you do want a full how to play video on this game, we have done that. And so go ahead and click the I in the top right corner and it will show you that video and you will understand all the rules to this particular game. So for the components with this game, you do have cards. Now, I have the Critters and Crops deck out here on the table. And just to let you see some of the artwork on these cards, you can see that it's a bunch of critters and uh, crops. And so uh, the, the cards here are really important, really cool. Uh, there are suits with the game and this is the raccoon suit. And so you see raccoons on the card, whereas this particular one is uh, like a mole or something and so it has a mole on the card and so there are three raccoons because it is a three raccoon whereas this one is a jack and uh, this is a rabbit suit and so it's an ace and you do have jokers and special cards which I will come back to for the critters and crops deck uh, the bear is the uh, most special card and then there is also the hordes and hordes deck now the hordes and hordes deck is going to function rules wise mostly in the same way as the critters and crops there are some slight rules differences for the versus mode which we'll get to here in just a minute um, but as for the standard version of the game the rules are exactly the same to show you some of the artwork on these cards you're going to have goblins on them there's going to be swords battle axes or clubs uh, battle axes you do have jokers as well and instead of bears you have dragons now uh, I know the artwork for the hordes and hordes deck is going to be improved just slightly so uh, just know that again this is prototype so it will change once it's released from crowdfunding now, there are three different ways to play this particular game. You have the standard mode, the solo mode, and the versus mode. And I'm going to briefly go over the rules for those three modes, starting with the standard mode. Now, for setup in this game, each person is going to have their own set of stacks in front of them. You're going to have three sets of five, like you see here. So this would be my set of stacks, whereas this set of stacks over here would be for another player. Now, in a two-player game, each player will have their own set of stacks in front of them, as you see here but then you will have a third set of stacks that are going to be set off to the side not in front of any particular player those are going to be neutral and both players are going to be playing off of those cards so uh, having it set up here, I'm going to explain to you what you're trying to do in this game, and then I'll explain how a turn works. So what you're trying to do, you're trying to get rid of the cards that are in front of you, as well as any cards in your hand, trying to claim cards as much as possible because the cards you claim are positive points, and they're going to be offset by any cards that are still in front of you or in your hand as negative points. Now, in order to claim cards, you're going to be using the cards that are in front of you or in your hand, placing them on top of other cards that are already out here and then setting them in a claim stash that's going to be uh, set off to the side to your own set of stacks. Now there's a couple of rules for how you can claim cards. You are going to be able to place cards on other cards and claim them if they are one digit higher or lower such as in this case right here my three is one lower than this four and so I would be able to claim it and put it in my stash like so. 
Um, but what would be an even better move than that would be to try and make sure you get suits that match, such as this particular instance right here. Again, three is one higher than two, so this is a valid claiming placement. And because the raccoon suits match, you get a bonus when you do this. You're gonna be able to claim two additional cards that are underneath the card that you're claiming, flipping over any cards that may be face down. And uh, you want to try to claim higher cards because those are gonna be worth more points. Aces are more valuable than number cards. And so, again, I would get to claim them and put them in my stash like so. So that is uh, one of the major rules about this game in claiming cards. Um, another way that you can claim cards is if you're placing a card on top of a card and the two numbers equal 12. So for instance, uh, a seven on a five. That's going to equal 12, and you will get to claim it in that particular instance. Um, now, if you do a six on top of a six, that's great as well because you get a bonus with that one as well. Six and six gets you one bonus card, similar to what I just showed you with the suit bonus there. Now that, now that you understand claiming, let me explain to you how you can take an action on your turn. You have four possible choices on your turn, and you're going to perform one of those choices each time. So the first thing that you can do is move and you would move the top card of one of the stacks in front of you in your set of stacks. So in this case, I can move this three, this jack, or this ace. And again, you would move it somewhere in order to claim the card. So for instance, I would move my three here on top of that two and get the suit bonus and uh, get the cards that were underneath it like I showed you just a second ago. That is one particular action. A second particular action is to draw cards from the deck. You do have to declare if you're drawing one, two, or three cards and you have to declare it before you take any cards. So for instance, I would say I'm going to draw two cards here and uh, those cards will go into my hand. Now a third possible action that you could do after you have cards in your hand is to play a card. And when you play a card, you can play it anywhere on the table, including your own stacks. Now going back to that move action, you cannot move a card that's on one of your stacks on top of another stack in your set of stacks. You have to move it elsewhere. But playing a card allows you to be able to play it anywhere on the board. So. I could play this king here on top of an ace because just like with the number cards, face cards work the same way in the sense that you need to play one higher or lower than what you're playing on top of. So this king can be played on an ace. Now with face cards, there is an extra rule that they have to be the same color. And so I have red here being the same color and it just so happens that there's a suit bonus here as well. And so I would get to claim two additional cards underneath this ace. And so that is playing playing a card from your hand. Now I do also want to point out that uh, aces do wrap around to twos and vice versa. So I could play this two on top of an ace and that would be valid as well. Now that's the uh, play a card action. The fourth possible action that you can do on your turn is called place. And uh, typically you would probably want to have three cards in your hand when you do this because with the place action, you're basically getting cards out of your hand and adding them to stacks for on another player's set of stacks. You could add them to your own, although that's probably not something you want to do because you're adding cards to those stacks and that's negative cards. It's getting negative points out of your hand and onto someone else's stack. So when you place cards, you add one card to the top of every stack in a set of stacks and you don't have to worry about whether or not they're valid placements for claiming because we're not claiming in this instance. We're just simply getting rid of cards in our hand and putting them on top of stacks in a set of stacks. So those are the four actions that you could do on your turn. How a round is going to end when all the cards in a set of stacks are emptied, whether that be in front of a player or the neutral set of stacks in a two-player game, that could end the round immediately. Alternatively, the, the round could end if the draw deck runs out, in which case everyone will play one more turn and then the round will end. Now you're going Going to play two rounds in the standard mode and how you score a round is very important. You're going to get one point for every numbered card in your stash that you've claimed so far. So numbers two through ten, that's going to be one point.
Face cards are going to give you two points. So jacks, kings, and queens are going to give you two points. Whereas aces are going to give you three points. Now jokers are going to give you four points. And what jokers are special about, they can be any number you need them to be. They can also be any suit you need them to be. So when you're playing a joker on top of an ace, let's say I could say that that is the king of rabbits or the two of rabbits. And that would give me the suit bonus there. Now, if a joker is already on your stack, you cannot move it, nor can you move anything on top of it. You have to play a card from your hand on top of a joker to make that work out for you. And then you have bears. Bears are worth six points and bears are special too. What bears are going to let you do is play on top of the stack and, and a set of stacks and you'll claim the top card of every set. Uh, or every stack in that set. So you're going to get a lot of cards there when you play a bear. Um, and again, anytime a card is face down on top of a stack, you do flip it over like so. Now, if this were the end of the round, I would get positive points for all these cards that are in my claim stack over here, but I would get negative points scored in the same exact way that I described to you just a second ago for all the cards that are in my stacks as well as any cards that are in my hand. Now, if I have positive points after determining all all of that I would get uh, I would shuffle all these cards back into this main deck and I would get one card face down to uh, to my ultimate score stack and uh, I would get that because I have positive points now for every 10 points positive that I get I get an additional card so let's say I scored 28 points I would get two more cards because I'm in the 20s had I scored 30 points, I would have gotten three more cards because I'm in the 30s. And I would add that to my one card for being positive, and I would keep these cards off to the side, not showing them, not looking at them myself, and we would repeat the whole process for a second round, scoring it the exact same way. And let's say in that second round, I got uh, 30 points again. I would get three points for each 10 positive and a card for being positive, adding that to my cards from the first round. And then we would reveal what these cards are and I would score them just like I described before. So look at that. Wow. All face cards and jokers. This would be a really nice hand to have at the end of the game because this would be worth a lot of points. And if I had the most points, then I would win the game. Now, had it been a tie, then we would go to how many cards I have versus how many cards you have, and whoever has the more cards in that particular instance would win. If it's still a tie, then you would go who has the highest card in this set. So I would have to say my Joker is the highest out of all my cards. Whoever has the higher card in that case would win the game. Now that's the standard mode of the game. But qu real quickly, the solo mode of the game is very much the same exact way. You would have another set of neutral stacks over here in addition to this neutral set set of stacks and then my own set of stacks and what you're trying to do in this particular version of the game you're trying to quickly clear out all the cards that are in your set of stacks as well as cards in your hand and uh, you're trying to make sure that there's still enough cards in the deck scoring all the cards in the deck as positive points offsetting them with any negatives that are in these neutral set of stacks as well as cards that are still in your set of stacks or your hand or now you're going to be all the cards in your set of stacks are going to be gone but cards in your hand will count as negative points and if you have positive points left over in the deck then you win the solo version of the game. Now, real quickly, the versus mode is going to introduce both decks into the game. And you can play this either two players or four players. And if you're playing four players, then you will play teams where it's two against two. And uh, with that, one team will be the critters and crops. The other team will be the hordes and hordes. And each player will sit across from their partner, having cards from their particular deck as their stacks in front of them. The game works virtually the same way, except for two major differences. One difference is that you can do play what's called invasions. And what that's going to let you do is, is that if you have a card in your hand, you can play it on top of a different themed deck as an invasion. So I could play this nine here of the, the goblins and play it, and I would play it perpendicular on top of a critter and crop stack. And it doesn't matter which stack you're playing. You don't have to worry about numbers or suits because you're not claiming any cards. And you place it perpendicular because usually you can only ever have one invasion on 
top of each stack. And what this ultimately acts as is an additional card on top of this player's stack that they're gonna get negative points for if they don't claim it. And you can claim it. You as the critter and crop player, you could play a valid card such as an eight or a 10 and be able to claim that. Now you're not gonna get suit bonuses because the different suits from the different decks don't match. So you can't get the suit bonus. Now the hordes and hordes players could be able to play on top of this nine and claim it for themselves if they wanted to and get the suit bonus. Um, that is a valid thing with that. So that's one major differences are the invasions. The other major differences are gonna be the special cards. The bears are going to have a special rule in that when you play the bears, you're not only gonna get the top card of every st uh, stack in a set of stacks, but you will get two additional cards underneath the bear that you're wherever you're playing it on. So the bear gets you a lot of extra cards in the versus mode. Whereas the dragon is also going to get you the top card of every set of stacks, but it's also going to let you play an invasion card on top of every stack in a different set of stacks. So it gets you extra invasions when you play the dragon. Those are the major differences with the versus mode in the game. And there you have it. You've got the, the standard, the solo, and the versus mode with this game. Now that you know it, let's go back up top and share our thoughts on this game. And we're back, and now we're gonna share our thoughts on stacks and stacks from a gamer and non-gamer's perspective. And if you watch the rules portion of the video, you'll know that there are three ways to play this game. You've got the standard mode, the solo mode, and the versus mode. And we're gonna talk a little bit on each of those, starting with the standard mode. So the standard mode, Sam, is the one where you're just playing with the one single deck and you're not doing the two decks with that. Um, it's the standard mode. It's the mode we probably played the most of with this particular yeah. game. What, what were your thoughts on it? Yeah, it was a lot of fun, especially um, the more you play it and the more you kind of, not necessarily strategy, but you just kind of figure out how to play it. You're more comfortable yeah. playing it and you can kind of look for openings to get rid of your cards or to mess yeah. with other players. Yeah, there, the more you play it, the more you discover there are good, smart things to do and yeah. not so smart things to do. Like you, you definitely want to be observant of what cards are underneath yeah. other cards so that you're not setting somebody up for a, a super turn, let's say, yeah. where they get that suit bonus and now they're getting a ton yeah. of cards. So there is a little bit of strategy involved in yeah. the game. Um, I felt like the game was was like a multiplayer solitaire. Yeah. And, and solitaire, that might have some negative connotation to it, just because it's just a, a you know a game yeah. that you, you, you know because it's on every computer in the world and, and you play it when you're bored. But this is a lot of fun. Yeah. That multiplayer, watching what everybody's doing, trying to keep up with everybody, getting rid of your cards. You want to get rid of your cards, but you don't necessarily want to get rid of them too quickly you're um, right because then you are losing out on opportunities to get other cards exactly yeah it's not always the person who gets out of their cards yeah. the fastest it's who who's been getting the best cards stashed away so yeah you're exactly right for you as a non-gamer what was it like wrapping your head around the strategy and and just how to do well in this game i thought it was a great game for a non-gamer i think that it like you said it's, it's similar enough to a to solitaire or other card games that you've played before so you know the idea you're not having to learn a completely new concept um but the the matching them or the um stealing cards and getting cards and everything like that is quite different but it's easy to understand um so it's a good i think competitive game for non-gamers because yeah. it puts you on a especially the um, scoring process puts you on a little bit more of an even playing field with gamers. Okay, there you go. So let's talk a little bit about the solo experience. And Sam, do you play solo no, board games? No, of course she Ever. doesn't. I mean, she's a non-gamer. I don't, I don't play solitaire. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I played the solo version of this game. Um, and I'll tell you guys that I, what I was blown away with with this is that the solo version of the game feels a lot like the multiplayer experience of the game. It doesn't feel like they're very different. And that's always a, a huge plus when we're talking about solo gaming is do you get the same sort of experience with the solo and the multiplayer? And I think you do with this particular game. And the reason for that is, is because you are, in some ways you're battling against the game itself, of course, but you're wanting to try and preserve this deck of cards as best as you can because that's where all your points are coming from and you need to be able to use them to offset your negative points. And so 
it's important to try to be efficient and play smart just like you would in a multiplayer game. And so it's not you playing against the other persons and seeing what they're doing, it's you reacting to the deck and trying to be quick about it. Um, not quick in time, but quick in number of turns, let's say. Um, so very positive experience with the solo mode for sure. Now let's talk about the versus mode. That's where you had both sets of decks in the game. The two decks that you see here, the critters and crops and the hordes and hordes. And so Sam, um, what did you think about that? What was your experience with the versus mode and how different it is from the, the standard mode? It's, so, it's definitely different. It's not so different that you feel like you have having to learn a new game, but it adds enough that I think gamers will appreciate the variety. Yeah. Me as a non-gamer, I like... Consistency. This, this, <laughs> I like the standard. I don't like to try different things, but I did think that it, it added something. It wasn't just, you know, a, something pasted on. Yeah to make it a new game. It was it was a different game. Yeah, it's definitely a different experience because you're working with those blockades and it gives them more of an opportunity, more of a strategy to formulate by throwing roadblocks into other people's and I ways. Don't like, I don't like exactly. the roadblock part, but um, I do think it, it added a, a different level to yeah. the game. And so I do definitely think the versus mode is, it, it's good for non-gamers. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's still an easy game to understand. Yeah, but I think it's great for gamers yeah. because it adds in that extra little twist um, that really kind of gives an, a, a, a full punch for that gamer feel yeah. to a lighter card game. Um, and so gamers can get a, a really great experience from that versus mode. And then you throw in the fact that it's team-based as well, and you're really kind of synergizing with your teammate there and trying to play to what they've got in front of them yeah. because you really need to work together to maximize your points in order to win this game. And it's, it's, it's quick because it's only one round, yeah. whereas the standard version is two rounds. So you get one chance yeah. to try and knock it out of the park. And so... Uh, all in all, all three versions of this game are home runs for me. I really enjoyed it. Love that it's light and, and yeah. small and portable. Um, you can really play this just about anywhere. It doesn't take up a whole lot of table space either. So yeah. the game is Stacks and Stacks. It's from Pure Fun Media. Leave us some comments down below. Let us know what you think about this particular game. Make sure to like and subscribe and push that bell button so you get notifications of all our new content. I'm Lance. I'm Sam. And we are Love to Hate, where we try to bridge the gap between gamers and non-gamers. We'll catch you next time.